about you being gone Is I can watch the game all day long And I can stretch my legs out in the bed Extra pillow underneath my head I Don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely I got a lot more room for my stuff And I only have to wash one cup I can stay late and play my guitar And the groceries go twice as far I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside lonely Your girlfriends ain't ringing the phone off the wall I never have to hear from that mother-in-law Ain't cut the grass since the middle of June I smoke a big cigar up in my living room Don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside lonely Trash pile up right by the door Eat pizza and ice cream three times a day Cause I ain't worried about watching my way I don't know why nobody ever told me About the upside of lonely Yeah man, to think about all the good things about you being gone Stretch out out here at home. Hey man, come on in. Don't mind the muddy shoes on the white carpet. She ain't here. You hungry? Hey man, I got some food if you want to eat. I got a microwave oven with little pictures on the front of it. You just pick what you want to eat and push the button. And it will cook it for you. Yeah, man, you can smoke that cigar up here in the kitchen. Just use that vase over there. Need something to drink? We got beer, bourbon, whiskey, scotch, Diet Coke, Fanta. Yeah, man, I bet you've been on the road for a minute. Bathroom's right down the hall. Switches on the left, doors on the right. Just remember to leave the lid up. Leave it up. Hey everybody, welcome to Keep it swinging Facebook Live on Wednesday night. And we are so glad you're joining us tonight. It is great to see you all. Hey, Neboisha. Uh, hey, back to you and Morgana. Hope you guys are well. And uh, it's going to be a fun show. Our special guest tonight is none other than bass extraordinaire and traveling the world. Great musician all around. Good guy. Scotty Thompson is going to join us a little bit later. Uh, right now, I'm going to play... Uh, 
a tune that uh, Missoni was playing on one of her playlists that I I forgot all about, uh, done by um, one of my favorites, the great Dan Washington. got a lot to learn well honey I'm trying hard not to learn since this is a perfect spot to learn teach me tonight starting with the A B C of it right down to the X Y Z of it help me solve the mystery of it but teach me tonight they say the sky's a blackboard up above you If a shooting star happens to pass by I'd lose that star to write I love you A thousand times across the sky One thing isn't very clear, my love Should the teacher stand so near, my love A graduation so most dear, my love Teach me Wednesday. We are halfway through February. I can't believe it. And uh, just time is marching on. Uh, a couple of things, of course. 
Check out our PayPal right here. Um, <laughs> I love all the comments. Naboisha, thank you very much. Uh, one comment I'd like to make is check out our PayPal, PayPal, PayPal uh, account here. It's our tip jar. Helps keep things flowing and rolling around here at Vivify Music. It's never expected, but it is always, always appreciated, folks. PayPal me dot paypal.me slash brian nova music on this side make sure you sign up for youtube we are moving to youtube we keep saying that and we're going to do it believe me you believe you me we are going to make the jump and uh we want you to be there with us when we do uh what else we have to talk about uh big shout out to all our pals of course up and down the west coast uh starting with the east side of seattle over there up north in kirkland we've got all our pals up at the church show room Hope you guys are doing well. And in fact, tonight, in your honor, we are smoking a Churchill, uh, a wonderful Winston uh, Churchill over there. And uh, there's that, there's that, and there's that. Uh, what else we've got? Of course, our pals at Vertigo Club, John Connells, everyone up there. It's going on to see you, good to see you guys. Uh, all the way through the Bay Area and all the way down here to Mirage Cigar Lounge and and we've got Mike and Kevin and all our pals over there. And, of course, PDT, Palm Desert Tobacco. Glad you guys can all join us. we got some guests here. Vince Littleton. Vince had a birthday this last week. Happy birthday again, Vince. Hope you guys are doing well. Dennis Crosby. Pay per pal. <laughs> Pretty much. Yes, exactly. And uh, Vimo. Uh, sure. Any way you want to do it, Dennis. We're... We're musical. Uh, we accept all forms of payment. Uh, Neil Lavonius, who was our guest this last week. Man, what's going on with you? Good to have you with us, everybody with us tonight. play jazz only when I have to. David! It's only a paper moon hanging over a cardboard seat wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me. It is only a canvas sky sailing over a muslin tree. But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me. Without your love, it's a honky-tonk parade. Without your love, it's a melody played on a penny arcade. Does a bottom man Bailey world just as phony as it can be But it wouldn't be make-believe If you believe in me
By the way, I should probably put a big shout out there, of course, to our friends Ted and Laddie Hall over at Long Meadow Ranch, one of our sponsors here, Long Meadow Ranch, folks, with their fantastic Cabernet Sauvignon for dinner tonight. It is actually fantastic stuff. And of course, uh, we've had Ted on the show many, many times. Uh, Elizabeth, is that your head in the corner or is it Masoni's? Well, uh, it's my hat. Uh, the verdict's in. And uh, yeah, it's one of my little Hawaiian hats back there. I don't know why it's out there, but there it is. Uh, what else do we need to talk about? Do you play jazz? Asking for Myra? Sure. Yes. Only when I have to. Anyway, at this moment, at this time, I would like to bring our very special guest in. Uh, all the way from the Bay Area, joining us via ecam is our special guest tonight the one and only mr scotty thompson scotty are you there oh you are there hey brian man it's good to see you it's good to see you too oh man good to be aquarius seen. what is that aquarius oh that's a uh it's a dive shop down in monterey Ooh, um nice. it's great man great shop if you're into scuba diving and you're you in monterey diver? i recommend checking it out i am yeah the things you didn't, the things I didn't know about Scotty, and that was one of them. I did not know you were a diver. Yeah. Where do you go down there, Monterey? Yeah, that's the that's the closest spot with good diving for me. Um, you know, I'm in like you said, I'm in the Bay Area, so it's about a two hour drive from here, and uh, some some pretty fun stuff in there. No Although kidding. there's there's been a lot more uh, white sharks lately, so it's like that's a little uh, <laughs> a little sketchy, but it's fun. <laughs> I'm not going to even touch that one, but yes, yes. Uh, I was going to say we have some white sharks down here as well, but uh, <laughs> we call them a, we call them Q-tips. But nonetheless, onward and onward here, folks. Uh, Scotty here is uh, you teach all over the world, and I man, I got to tell you, you're like one of the baddest Latin bases I've ever come across. Uh, how did you get so? proficient more than proficient how did you become a master at the latin genre on bass well man i was really fortunate to to uh grow up in the bay area um because there's like a thriving scene here there's like um you know some some great like afro-cuban musicians out here uh oh, sure. that i had i had the privilege of playing with i, I played in josh jones's group when i was like a, a teenager and he was like you know, he would school me on the on the Cuban stuff. Um, ben Hevero helped me out a lot with that stuff too. Um, and for like the Brazilian stuff, uh, kind of growing up uh, with my mom playing in Marco Silva's band and like to with Toninho Horta and, and uh, Flor Nayerto, um, and just getting to soak all that stuff up as a kid. You know, and then later on, Marcos showed me all that stuff and like 
you know, he, he broke all the rhythms down for me. And so I had some great teachers and um, a lot of great guidance growing up here. I, I was, man, I'm so privileged, you know? Um, so th- that's a, <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of how, that's kind of how I soaked that stuff up. It didn't just happen by accident, but I had some great teachers who, who schooled me when I was pretty young on how to do this stuff. And then just like hours of playing in nightclubs, you know? That's, that's such a that's dichotomy real. for the Bay Area, you know, saying that, uh, because I can tell you one thing, the Bay Area does not have any decent Latin food, that's for sure. Uh, we struggled for years trying to find a decent Mexican restaurant up there to have some Mexican food. It's just, there are. Oh, man, you should have called me, man. You should have yeah? called me, man. I, I know some good spots. I, I'll, I'll take you around next time. All right, I'd yeah. love it. I'd love it. For sure. Uh, <laughs> we're spoiled down here in the Southwest where it's just, you know, it's it's pretty happening. So it's, yeah. And Seattle's even worse. I go to Seattle and Sony and I were in Seattle stuck for five years without a decent taco. Let alone, oh, man. At least, let, let alone a, a, a real, you know, me- Mexican meal. Anyway, just so, like me, get mixed up on food. More about you. Listen, uh, so where'd you study at? Um, so, uh, a, bu- a bunch of places, uh, I, I would say like, um, the jazz school had a huge impact on me, uh, it, growing up, I, I took like the, uh, the after school, uh, combos there. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, the jazz camps that are out here too, like jazz camp West in sure. uh, La Honda, it's like Santa Cruz mountains. Yeah. Um, yeah. the California, Brazil camp. That was, that was like, you know, that was a play. I mean, I started going to jazz camp at 15 and, and California, Brazil camp at 16 um, and going there every year and just like soaking that stuff up. It's like, it's so rare, man. Cause you have like all these master musicians in one place, like living together, eating together, playing together for like, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah. Um, there's i mean dude it's just like nothing like that you know so um th- those were like some some very influential places and then i i ended up uh going up to seattle interestingly enough you mentioned that um for about a year and i, I studied with jovino santos neto up there sure. at cornish jovino, yeah so i i got uh schooled in the hermeto pasquale you know world sure, for about yeah. a year which was really cool, you know. I, I love Seattle, man. Big big shout out to to all the folks up there. Um, Seattle's great really people, good. great musicians. It's a great music town, you know. just like kind of the way San Francisco used to be years ago. It was sort of oh like, man, uh, music. <laughs> yeah, it used to be killing, man. Like all these nightclubs and musicians, and like now it's just like a you know tech wasteland. It's like you know <laughs> that could be the name of a song there, Scotty. Tech wasteland. Yeah, it's high great. It's great if you're in land. IT, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, listen, uh, I, I, we've got a couple of videos, and I'd like to lay one of them on everybody right now. Uh, the first video we've got in play, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, one that we, you and I, and Andy Fraga did, uh, "Mania de Carnival," uh, a wonderful Brazilian tune. It's probably the most misnomenclature tune in jazz, as far as I'm concerned. I've even gotten fights with jazz DJs online, you know, in the studio. Because everybody knows the song as Black Orpheus, but it's not at all. It's uh, There's actually a tune called Black Orpheus that was a theme song from the movie Black Orpheus. Uh, and this is not that. This was called uh, Mono de Carnival. was just a, a tune in the movie. Uh, Louis Bonfa, but uh, anyway, th- that's all yeah. useless trivia that you'll never get to use <laughs> again. So, for whatever it's worth, uh, but so here is the tune "Mania de Carnival," uh, featuring yours truly, Scotty Thompson on the bass, and Andy Frag Jr. on the drums. Check it out.
Here we go, boys. <laughs>
It does. Yeah, yeah. Scotty. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, uh, right. Dennis Crosby says hi. <laughs> uh, Murray Oryx says hi. Got all kinds of fans checking you out here, man. Hey, man. What's up, Murray? What's up, Dennis? Uh, Neil Lavonia says you have the best stank face. Oh, man. You know, I just uh, That's supposed got to, to practice right. in the mirror. Like That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. Very well done. Yeah. Vince Littleson yeah. says hi as well. Yeah. What's up, Vince? Got all kinds of folks pouring in here. Hey, so listen, cool. uh, one of the questions I wanted to talk to you about is uh, who were some of your early bass influences? Oh, man. Because I hear so um, much in your playing. I hear, you know, everything from some of the great Latin players to Jocko. And I hear uh, I hear uh, Ron Carter. And I hear all, you know, all sorts of stuff. All those guys. There. All those guys, man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my... my folks are both musicians i should probably mention that um so i had like a pretty extensive not just musicians your mother's like one of the top top saxophonists and maybe on the west coast for for christ's sakes yeah she's badass definitely um yeah. so and, and uh you know so they had a huge discography like of uh uh not I don't want to say discography because they didn't record on all of them, but they had like a huge record collection, CD collection, cassette tapes. Um, so when I was like little, I started out just playing drums, like playing along with Beatles records. And then, you know, like I, I listen, but I listen to all that stuff, man, like Cannonball, Weather Report, like, you know, um, DJ Avon, like Milton Nascimento, mm. um, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, um, you know felonious so monk i was a huge yeah. ming i was a huge mingus fan i actually uh in high school i had this big mingus poster up in my bedroom uh it was like it was all trippy um but yeah man like as far as like bass influences um you know there, there was like there were some local guys that really like were the inspiration for me starting to play bass um gary brown was one of them um Derek Jones was another. Uh, Derek moved to Las Vegas um, a few years, but it's it's been a while since he, he moved out of the Bay. But those guys were big influences and uh, and definitely like showed me a lot of stuff. Um, and not just you know got me inspired to play bass, but um, showed me guys like Victor Wooten, a, a mm. great great bass player. Um, if you guys aren't hip, you know check him out. Uh, Elaine Caron, he's like a French Canadian bass player. Um, I remember I, I had like, you know, these CDs that, that Derek gave me that, that I was just like obsessed with. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, like, uh, you know, the, the jazz guys like, uh, Mingus and Ron Carter were big influences. Ray Brown was a big influence. Um, on all of us. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know like guys, modern guys like Kristen McBride that came after Ray Brown, like um, you know John Clayton, those guys. Uh, I actually did like a base camp with with John Clayton, did you? And uh, like Kristen Korb and and all oh, sure, you know, yeah. all, all these all these Ray Brown like protégés. Um, oh, so I got yeah. to soak soak that stuff up. Good, um, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ray I could Brown keep going on and on. <laughs> Ray Brown's certainly the big, uh, the big trunk and the big tree. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Murray Oryx uh, says hi too. Murray, it's good to see you, Murray the Blur. And uh, I owe you a phone call, Murray, because uh, I got your videos are fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, speaking of phone calls, I, I think it's time we brought in uh, one of our our guest uh, our guests here. The one and only Dan Gordon, the great Dan Gordon, is here with us. He's taking the middle oh, of the great. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's quite the great Dan Gordon. I just oh, think I think so. In fact, um, it, you're I'm so the, great. I'm we, the, we, we've made your your own sign there, as you can see. So uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I could have been if I would have been honored to be Scotty Thompson for a few minutes because no one plays funk like he does. No, no and that I wanted is just, very true. I was that hoping by true. absorbing. Absorbing the name for just a split second there, I could have actually become that hip. 
But alas, no, I am still the same old bass slash tenor trombone player without the same kind of rhythm. That's all right, dude. Square is still a shape. <laughs> but I always like, anytime I get to play with Scotty, it's a treat. It's not frequent enough, but I end up playing with his mom a lot more. And uh, and I enjoy every moment of that, too. You, you didn't really go into the, the history there, but she is the living legend. She's not just one of the primary premier alto sax players or lead altos in the, uh, in the, uh, in the state, but actually was uh, historical in being the first female um, player to, to enter the Stan Kenton uh, big band, which I got the year true. when I was a kid. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Big, big time thing. Cause that was the premier deal. That was it. You played with Kenton, you toured with Kenton, you were something. Um, and, and at least when I was growing up, that was the biggest so anyway, I love your mom. Never met your dad. Me too. I didn't know he's a player too. Yeah. 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 He's, but, a, he's a great drummer. But genetically, I mean, it makes a lot of sense now. It's all coming together. Yeah, I was very fortunate to grow up uh, with the parents that I had. You know, like my mom, like just, uh, I mean, the the amount of like cool backstage hangs that I had before I was like ten. It's oh. ridiculous. You know, <laughs> I got to meet like Bobby McFerrin and like BB King and like all the, I got to play Clark Terry's trumpet back when I was like a trumpet player backstage when she, when she was playing with him. It was like, you know, I, I could go on and on about that, but, but yeah, man, I'm very, very fortunate uh, to have the parents that I have. So. Well, I'm sure they feel the same too, having the son they have because you have turned out to be, quite quite the player yourself we got leo vigils chiming in he says hey good to see you leo our great drumming friend and uh brett may and larry dunlap larry we love you larry in fact uh when we're all done here folks uh make sure you go over and you check out larry dunlap uncle larry's cave he comes on at 7 p.m right after us on wednesday nights uh same bat channel FaceTime. It's really a song and dance act with a little humor thrown in. It is. Larry it Dunlop. Is. Yeah. He's, he's really the Andy Kaufman of, uh, of our decade. <laughs> That's an interesting way of putting it. You Scott, know, I you see know, you got like your that. bass out there, man. You want to play us a tune or something? Sure, man. I, I just, you know, I have it because I didn't know if I'd need it. Well, dude, uh. it's not a matter of need. It's a matter of want, really. So... Uh... <laughs> You guys don't know. <laughs> it's from Greece, isn't it? Summer loving had me a guess. <laughs> Dan was ready to pull out his maracas there. I could see him, man. Well, I could see the shape I, I knew it, on the way up. Well, I, I've had this, you know, desire to play any Latin percussion instrument with Scotty for a long time. And uh, hopefully oh, yeah. the dream comes true. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You haven't you seen it. You got your much. shaker? Well, it's a lot of choreography that goes along with it. I can't just put myself <laughs> in the moment. I really take the Bob Vickers philosophical approach that you need to mentally prep up for that moment. Oh, yeah. It's all about prep. <laughs> a lot of mental right. prep. And the, and the millisecond time lag on, on the internet is really makes the rhythm interesting because you're just that much lagging and dragging um, as yeah. a bass drum moment or should, you know, we're, we're notorious for, for being late, but yeah, I, I spared you the moment, Scotty, but I yeah. was, I was, uh, I was really enjoying the groove there. Yeah, that was, uh, so, uh, you know, besides playing like Latin music, I've gotten really fortunate to be able to play with like a lot of Bay area legends in the hip hop world. Um, and that, that was, you know, I learned that song when I was playing with, uh, in two shorts band, um, that's that's getting it by too short so if you guys aren't hip check it out um yeah i got to play in it with the hieroglyphics as well oh, um, there you go. i'm on a couple of e40 albums 
<laughs> and uh, you know, man, it's like so you're much fun the, because it's just the... yeah. I mean, those were the original gangsters, man. That's the original group. The OGs, man. Yeah, too short, and, too short yeah. in the. E40? Yeah, too short. The hieroglyphics, E40. Those guys are legends, man. Bay Area legends, and um, they all really schooled me, man, on how to like play play funk, hip hop, and and like you know how that how that music was created. Um, it's so cool, man. Like the way that they sample, like it could be like a jazz song that they sample and and flip it, and then add like a funk beat to it. And then, you know, this funky bass line and all of a sudden you got like a, a hip hop like classic. So uh um that's that's another style that I really enjoy and uh love to play. But yeah, man, uh what do you think? You, should I play some like Billy's Balance or something like that? Play a little jazz tune. We're on a jazz That'd podcast, cool. so I don't know what I'm talking about hip hop for. <laughs> Dude, no, we're you're on a music podcast. Uh, we, yeah. we do all sorts of stuff. I mean, uh yeah. Billy Bounce would be right. awesome. I'd love to hear that. All right. Scotty, yeah, yeah, Turn this sort of a modern take on a jazz classic, dude. That is a jazz classic, <laughs> right on, man. Oh, Larry Dunlap says there's no show tonight, folks. I don't know what's going on, Larry, uh, but uh, hopefully, he'll be on next week. I think he's on twice a week, I think he's on Sundays and Wednesdays, but uh, we try to tune in every Wednesday when we can. Also, my pal Aaron, Aaron Wansley, man, good to see you. Hope all's well with you, brother. Missing you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we got all kinds of jokes. Well, listen, uh, we're going to bring in uh, yet another bass icon and probably one of your major influences as a young man. We have with us, of course, the one and only, the uh, genetically perfect Terry Miller is going to join us here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> there he is, Terry Miller. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Hey. Good to see you, man. Good seeing you, Terry. Yeah, what's up, man? Well, man, I, I didn't know you were on. I, I would have been a lot more nervous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I, I feel Brian, exactly the same way, Scotty. <laughs> Brian, you know, 
on the right track. You're 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 getting bass players on. You're doing yeah, great. Well. <laughs> <laughs> after, Jerry, after I, 11 months of the facebook live show he's scraping the bottom of the barrel <laughs> no 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 they bring the best that's all that was left yeah yeah i've chased everybody else away oh, i have a question terry um is genetically genetic perfection something you check the box in at the hospital when you're being born how, do, how does you're, one uh th this is a brian nova thing so he's but I want to hear the details. He's he's got to feel the details. I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, that's no fun. <laughs> oh man, I love uh, it. I love it. Terry, how's everything up north there in lovely uh, Tahoe land? I guess we could call it. Up yeah, there. yeah, it's 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 real good, real good. I think we might head to Tahoe tomorrow. You know, they got a little, little bit of a dusting from the last couple of days. That'd be kind of fun. But uh, no, loving it, man. Having did you guys day. get some snow? We well here in El Dorado Hills we did not, but up in you know a little a little farther up from Placerville they did. So so some of the lake areas, you know, the high mountain lakes, mm -hmm. they've got snow. So a lot of fun, real pretty, really really nice. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I know There's, Seattle. All my family in Seattle got got completely uh, trounced with snow. Oh my gosh. Well, I, I have a sister that lives in Plano, Texas, which borders Richardson, oh, Texas. Goodness. And I don't know if you've seen that on the news, man, but they're just, they're getting this cold streak that they've never gotten before. I mean, they, Texas is really hurting right now, man. They got, yeah. They're in bad they shape. Yeah, really bad they're shape. They're in bad yeah. shape. Yeah. What else do we have So here? Scotty, man, what have you been doing? What's up, Terry? You know. Just, uh, yeah, I actually had a gig last weekend. It was Shut awesome. Up. Get out of here. Yeah. No way. Oh, my God. Yeah. God. Did it pay money? Yeah. It paid actual money. Th thankfully, it was a jazz in the neighborhood event. So they guarantee awesome. like 150 bucks a man. So I was like, hey. sweet. Well, you know, yeah. if you can do that once a year, holy cow. <laughs> oh man, yeah, but don't tell the feds, man. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> mom's, mom's the word. Mom's the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't want them you. thinking that I'm above my tax bracket. So, oh, boy. Yeah. Right. and you got yeah, a okay. shot today, right, Scotty? <laughs> yeah, right. man, I got my first COVID shot today. Oh, you did? So wow. Yeah, so oh, I can go back to teaching soon, man. And, oh, oh you know. teacher, yeah, right, of course, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah teacher so she was allowed that shot as well so you know brian it's it's really fun man uh, uh scott holds such a dear spot in my heart we go way way back i used to do jam sessions with with eric and with mary and john r burr would come over and uh you know scott was there and man he was you were like i think like five or six or something and then yep. I taught a jazz, or well, I did a couple of lessons with him when he was about 10 or 11 or something like that, and, you know, yeah. um, and then I taught a jazz camp for this guy, great, great educator, Bob Athade, and Scott was in my class, and we started playing, and he started playing, and I just told him, man, save your money, whatever you're doing, just keep doing that. <laughs> and, I mean, he was blowing circles, I'm just around everybody man just playing so 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 great you know oh man and, he, and it's it's really a joy to hear him play what i i wish i had the feel he has and understood like latin brazilian afro-cuban um you know as i've heard so many people say he's one of the very very few bass players from this country that plays without an accent you know, he, he plays the, the way it should really, really go. So um, anyway, Indeed. I'm glad you're around, buddy, man. It's like, you know, it's time for me to get a lesson from you. You got to show me some of your stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> man, I would I always be down to hang with you, Terry, man. Oh, uh, it was oh, so much fun. Long. And I, I still have the, the piece of paper that you gave me. It was like a it was like a list of notes on, like, how to live my life as a bass player. And I've stuck to <laughs> it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Nice. <laughs> Can we get a copy of that, Scotty? I would love to oh, see what Terry Terry was laying on players. Oh yeah, yeah. 
But oh, hey, God, Terry, man. Classic. But I, I, I heard that um, I was a bit of a mischief maker uh, at those jam sessions when I was a kid. Uh, well, you, do, but, do you want me to tell a story? Well, yeah. Wasn't I? Was did I cause a little trouble yeah. for you at one of those sessions? Yes, yeah, a, yeah, a lot of trouble. So we did a jam <laughs> session, and I had the bass cabinet with four ten-inch speakers called an SWR Goliath, and in the back it had a, a hole about that big, so you know the speakers could vibrate and it wouldn't you know they wouldn't pop and so nice did, uh, ported cab yeah and so I'm, so I'm loading this thing in the back of my truck i had a truck back then and i'm loading it in there and i kind of turn it to the side and i hear this <laughs> like what the heck was that and so i reach inside this thing and i pull out a boulder I mean, it's the size of a football. and i'm like what the heck and i called you know his mom and dad out there and um they came out, and there's two kids, so there's Scott and Jeff. And they didn't call Jeff. They just went, Scott. <laughs> Scott. So Scott came out, and he you know, and, and they, and the thing's got to weigh like 90 pounds. And it's like, did you put that in there? And he said, well, he's probably five or six. And he goes, well, I was walking by that rock, and I accidentally bumped it with my foot. And it sort of flew up in the air like three feet in the hole, and then dropped inside. And... They were very proud though, because at least you top to it. But uh, progress. So anyway, if, you have, if, you have a, if you have a guitar ramp that's open back, keep it away from Scott. <laughs> duly noted. Duly noted. Yeah. Moral yeah. of the story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought oh, that's true. Uh, it's so good to see you, man. It's, it's just, just thousands of stories like that. Just fun. fun well, fun, listen. Fun. Hold on to those. I've got another video I want to show really fast yeah. here. Good. Uh, right. As Terry had mentioned about uh, Scott's uh, proficiency, shall we say, in Latin music, uh, <laughs> we have a wonderful uh, video here of uh, Scotty playing the um, not just the bass line but the melody as well to the classic tune "Body and Soul" and a bossa nova nice. feel. Yeah. So, uh, joining right. uh, Scotty and I, of course, is uh, Junior himself, Andy Fragger Junior, on the drums. So, uh, give it a listen. Here we go, Scotty. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Scotty, fantastic, man. Awesome, Great awesome. job there. Yeah, man. You're the man. You're the man. Yeah, man. Tim Hockenberry absolutely loved it. Oh, I'll bet he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He probably really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. He loves yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Tim likes, uh, well, it shows that he's been from another country, at least, so he knows the difference. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, all right. And uh, Brian Switzer liked it too. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Dan so, be so Dan, VR. Dan Gordon, you're you're seemingly you're surprisingly quiet this evening. Well, most of us trombone players don't know how to behave around bass players, so we're we're just, you know, just trying to take it in and roll with the flow. But one of the fun things was hearing you guys doing the bass player dialogue amongst each other for the first five minutes of the show. Yeah. That was special. Yeah. Terry, the other thing common about uh, bass players is that they're technologically uh, inadequate when it comes to once they get that genetic perfection, they lose their technical prowess. And that's why Terry has just disappeared. Similar to spinal tap with a spontaneous combustion of drummers we don't you know, know what that happened to terry like, we don't know what happened or something yeah hey, hey, the bass players just terry got disappear. stuck in his egg <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is an awesome scene yeah right, uh, right. Here, here that or, that or carol cut him off one or the other yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i, I uh, actually but, played with the uh, the piano player from spinal tap uh his name's viv savage and uh, he's kind of a, he's kind of a, a legendary you know, character. Um, every time we play together, he's always like turned up to 11, like so loud, man. You, you need earplugs. Um, I think well, he's, he's partially big, deaf. He's got the big fluffy <laughs> mop to protect his ears from any kind of overload. So that's, that's why he's able yeah. to do it. Yeah. That's the yeah, key. Man. Whereas you're, you're, you're going high and tight. So you can't, you can't handle those, those extremities going to 11. You need to stay at about nine and a half. Um, yeah, very sensitive. What well, is amazing though is Tim Hockenberry is so beha- well behaved when he's just typing uh, typing comments. Um, I'm I'm very Tim. That's I'm really impressed. The restraint you show is is incredible. It's very grown up. Well, you haven't seen it. And very, things. but still sure disturbing at the same time. Yeah. 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 You should see the images he's been texting me. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Tim, Tim, Tim's busy. <laughs> <laughs> his comment. Can everyone see his comments? I was hear, talking yeah, during yeah, the bass yeah. solo too. It's just you couldn't hear it. <laughs> I want to give a big shout out yeah. there, Doctor Steve and Mia, and uh, I know Sarah's home, so it's good you guys are all together watching the show. Good to see you guys, Brett May. Brett, it's good to see you too. And of course, Norris and Ellen Bacho. Good to see you guys. We're gonna get Norris on the show here real soon. Speaking of that, uh, oh, he's behaving himself. T- uh, Tim's just, uh, he's, he's answering all sorts of stuff here. Oh, it's a lot. It's a very busy night for him. It is. It is. <laughs> Hear that? It's a very slow night for him. And he's. Uh... <laughs> anyway, listen, uh, guys, it's just amazing how fast the night goes by here and things just sort of. Uh, come and go uh, i could do this all night but i'm a gentleman and i'm not going to do you want me to play another bass solo so they leave <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should uh, you could play uh, a bass solo and talk during it that would probably really humor tim yeah yeah <laughs> get tim a microphone get tim on here it's long. We don't want deal. Tim on here. No. Yes, we no, do. We, really do. We, no. we, we do. We do. do. It? We need Tim. <laughs> I, I, I would like to. I would just like to suggest that it should be a, a quick Tim Hockenberry, Dylan O'Brien, and Brian Switzer, trio. Um, they don't have to play anything. They just need to be front and center on the screen so that we can we can enjoy the moment. That's what I would say. I, I want to like. What you did say. I, 
I want them yeah. to be like a commentary for like a music video, like play a music video and then have them comment on what's going on. Like the director's but, cut. Yes. Yes. You, you like the you director's want, cut. Yeah. You want that. That's what do, I want. Do we want that? Can we make that we happen? Want the, we can make that happen. Yes. We can right. do stuff like that. Uh, in fact, I was just going to figure out a way to get, uh, to get, uh, you know, what's his name? Hockenberry yep. on here. <laughs> you guys keep talking for a second. All right, there you go. <laughs> Ask him a question, man. So what's okay, your favorite um, mouthpiece? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so the worst thing is being sitting in front of the trumpet players in a big band because they spend four hours talking about the 28 different mouthpieces that they've tried out in the last last year and a half. It's the yeah. dullest thing ever. And then they you probably uh, got the same one since college, right? I've got two. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I literally for each horn, I've got two. I didn't know yeah. you're supposed to have different mouthpieces. They all they all seem like the same thing to me. I mean, I, I don't give a shit. You know, just so long as it fits in the hole in the horn and that it'll vibrate to make a sound. That's about so you it. Get, so you're a discerning uh, trombonist. It's got to fit in the hole and make a noise. That's it. That's that's right. our my qual- qualitative parameter. I basically play any horn, any mouthpiece that seems to sound the same. I like yeah. it when the slide moves though. It's nice when it's not the trombone players tend to have these like nightmares and the you know wake up in the middle of the night because their their slide won't move in their dreams. Oh, no. It's like yeah, it's the ultimate one. It's like showing up and your bass doesn't have any strings on it. You know, it's the same kind of kind oh, of man. horror story. Yeah, and hey, Tim Hockenberry's Tim Hockenberry's uh, nightmare usually is when he leaves his trombone laying around in different parts of the forest uh, in separated parts. And then he has a performance that, that night and he's forging around in the dark, trying to find the various parts of his trombone. That's not his nightmare. That's his actual life. So uh, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it and believe it. Uh. Brian Nova's back. How was that for, uh, we're talking about the Norwegian, uh, scalp cream for keeping your skin soft during the uh, harsh winters something like that yeah that was a mighty wind quote by the way <laughs> we're still trying to bring tim on here uh oh we're, we're gonna have it happen well hmm? he's at the beach he's at the beach the, clearly he's had wi-fi this whole time I don't know what at the beach means. Is he not presentable, Tim? Tim, tell us what the code translation is for I'm at the beach. I don't know what that means. I have bad thoughts about it. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) He always has good jokes. That's right. Hey, uh, Scotty. Tell us more about your mom and dad and some of, I mean, did, when, when you were, when they were kind of bringing you along, uh, did they push you in certain directions or did they uh, kind of leave your hands off or were they uh, presenting stuff no. all the time? No, they just kind of like, you know, wh- whatever I showed an interest in, they were just like, yeah, go for that. And, and you know, if, if we can give you the tools that you need to do that, we will. Like, uh, you know, I started... I started playing trumpet and they got me a great trumpet, got me hooked up with some, you know, Mike Vax. He, he gave me like some, he was my teacher uh, throughout high school. And, Mike Vax um, so was? I, yeah, I was like, I was like a high note trumpet player, like a lead trumpet player in mm-hmm. high school. So um, yeah, Mike was, he was great, man. Uh, talk about, you know, different m- mouthpieces. He was like, he checked out my setup. He was like, no, you don't want this. Man. You, want, you want this mouthpiece and, and this horn. And, and sure enough, you know, it added another like fourth to what I was playing. So, um, yeah, I know Vex very well. He's a, uh, like, oh, who's that yeah. cowboy? Yeah. What the hell? Turn your, oh, phone side, up, Tim? turn your phone sideways, Timmy. Like that? There you go. Oh. Yeah. Now, we get, now we can get the whole hat in the picture. You guys are awesome. Hey, that was a great bass solo, man. It really was. I mean, that was fantastic. I don't know how to do this. There. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Dan, Dan, you look I'm great. usually... 
I'm usually not a fan of bass solos, so I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I didn't sense that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounded really Is good. Is your hat tingling? I'm I'm jealous of you guys playing. So were you guys doing you weren't doing that live, that was recorded, right? We're not telling. Oh. Oh. It's a, it's the, a secret. What's yeah. the plan? What's the platform you guys use to do that? Same one we use with you, acapella. Oh, acapella, right. Yeah. There's another one that I, someone was telling me about this. I don't know, it's like Ch Jamma Kazam or something. Jam Kazam, yeah. yeah. Where, you can, where you can play together at the same time. Does that work? It does to a certain degree, yeah. But it's really hard to do video with it. But yeah, it does, it does have its, uh, its uses for sure. Hmm. Cool. There's a there's a little bit of latency, so it's yeah, extremely none of, annoying. <laughs> none of them are latency free. That's the that's the yeah. Problem. Uh, see, it's like it's like a dog that bites once in a while. You know, it's pretty useless. <laughs> uh, Tim, I got a question for you. It looks like you're in a Victorian mansion. Um, I know, what's man, going I'm, on there? It's kind of crazy. I don't know how to change my camera. I don't know. This is where I, I mean. You got a, like a formal chair I mean, it's not, there. It's not really Victorian. It's kind of like a. It's like a church. It's kind of like a, <laughs> it's like a castle. Wait, are you in a mission? It's a. It's a small castle. It is. Um, but enough about me. What are you guys gonna play next? Uh, we're gonna play Tim's tour. Is this? Uh, did I miss the whole show? Was that the la that last Latin thing? Was that was it? That was it. Huh. Yeah, we started an hour. Well, an hour and we started an hour and ten minutes ago. Uh, Switzer texted me. He goes, "Hey, Nova's on. Go and um, go be a terrorist." <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to get my hands on Switzer. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brian. <laughs> Dude, that All is quite right. a play. So, uh, what's with the cowboy hat? Oh, yeah, it's, it's a new look. I'm I'm going with. I don't know. It's you know. I can't tell. It's you know, kind of part cowboy, part fedora. Maybe it's more of a fedora, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's like a non-committal sort of hat. Yeah, yeah. It's like you well, can the hat with your, the lighting. <clears throat> that way, you can ride your horse to the party, right? <laughs> I got it in Fort Worth, Texas. Oh well, that's kind of cowboyish. Yeah, when you got to wrangle cattle by day and make them an offer they can't refuse at night. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking good looking, it's amazing. <laughs> hey, you uh, I was getting dizzy there for a minute, Timmy. Sorry, Dan, yeah, you got to get closer to the camera. I can't see your pretty face so much, but I'm half blind. Boy. So, I, I think hey. I think the problem is that it's you're sitting in the dark because I can barely see you. Your uh, your lighting is is a little tough. Your there's a nice backdrop lighting. But, yeah. Oh, there you go. It's a dark castle. I got the poor light now. There you go. Oh, now we go. So Wait. are people are people listening to us talk right now, like on Facebook? Yeah, a lot. Uh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Oh no, that's why you're here. <laughs> I thought this was a, I thought this was a private like dancer room. Oh no! Thought, oh no! no. The, the ratings are skyrocketing right now. Oh yeah, yeah, they're skyrocketing. Should I do a little strip tease? It's like the champagne room, but with more sex. What happened to Terry? Where's Terry? Where did he go? Uh, apparently, Terry's Wi-Fi fell out. Is that what happened, honey? Yes. Mm. I guess her Wi-Fi went bye-bye. Oh, I thought you said his wife fell down or something. No, his no, Wi-Fi. No, his Wi-Fi, yeah. Nice see. They lost it. Is he in Texas or what? <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, well be, yeah. he's, he's up there in the mountains somewhere. It's a tangerine there, huh? Or a mandarin. Looks like we got a Tim Hockenberry free got, yeah. I like that, this. That Let's is a classic. This a that's a classic screensaver. It's right really there. good. We should say it's like, it. I, I just took a screenshot for later. So there you go. Yeah, that, that's... We can yeah, enjoy it. it. Folks, if you get anything out of this show tonight, uh, there it is. Right there. Eat your yeah. vitamin C. <laughs> you know, that could be a great Stay new album cover. Great new album cover for anybody. 
Anyway, yeah, we're like, gonna we are gonna have to say goodbye here, folks. I know it's just nothing but a rollicking fun play. Tim Hockenberry, thank you wherever you went to for joining us. We really appreciated uh, having you here. Uh, we got to get the uh, oh. <laughs> blur out here. <laughs> and uh, Dan, it's always Ooh. great to see you. Hope you're feeling okay. No, I'm doing great. You I just keep great. losing weight without working out. It's a weird thing. You look great. I love the uh, I love the yeah. grown up background you got there. That's really cool. This is the the office I'm calling from, as opposed to the kitchen. Yeah, you, you look official, man. It looks like you should be the mayor of uh, of your town there. Well, let me let me go in my pose real quick here. There you go. Let's just see. So you can get the the full the full kind of distinguished look here. Oh yeah! Oh That's yeah! Right there, yeah. The I'm CEO. Yeah, I'm yeah. Voting. Hold that. I'm voting for you, Dan. The CEO look. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're getting a we're getting Thank a screenshot of that one too, boy. I tell you. <laughs> yeah. A lot yeah. happening here in San Jose. This is this is something else. Yeah. Scotty, thank you for joining us. Also, will you? Hey, thanks, Brian. That was fun, man. Man, give your mom and your dad our best, and um, it's just great to have you on the show. It sounded great. And, uh, yeah, back at you, bro. You, you so much fun. Next time. All right. Yeah, man. sounds good. You take care. See you, Scotty. Right. Later. <clears throat> See you, boys. See you, boys. Anyway, folks, uh, what a show, huh? All that talent here and uh, and music, too. We want to thank all of you for watching. Uh, big shout out to uh, Tim Hawkenberry, of course, for joining us there. And... Uh, <laughs> And a big shout out to uh, our very special guests, Scott Thompson and Dan. And Terry, wherever you are, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, uh, we couldn't do it without the lovely Masoni. Honey, thank you very much. Uh, we should show that Timmy Hockenberry song. We should just go out with that one. Maybe we'll start opening our show with that. That could be, uh, that could be our new look. We've been looking for a new, <laughs> a new look here. Anyway, folks. Uh, Remember to be kind to each other, be sweet, uh, and uh, when things start to get you down and you get a little, you know, huffy puffy, remember to keep it swinging. Take care.